Good day, everybody. My name is Christian Flachnecker, and I'm responsible for the winter oyster drape breeding at Rapul. And in the next uh, few minutes, I would like to give you an update about our Rapul breeding activities, especially regarding resistance breeding. And yeah, the title is Proud Past, Pride Future. When we look into the past, um, then the country closest to the Baltics is Poland. Um, and here I have a graph about the winter oyster drape yields in Poland across the last 30 years. And this is the blue line here, and you can very well see that um, in 1993 the average yield in Poland was still two tons per hectare, and it increased step by step over the last 30 years, and now we are almost above three tons per hectare, so 50% increase of the yield. And at the same time, also the winter oyster drape surface in Poland increased, which is the yellow surface here. And this comes within the introduction of hybrids in 1999, 2000. And although we have in Europe the ban of neonicotine treatment in 2014-15, which had an influence on yield, but then due to breeding it recovered very well again. What are the challenges in uh, winter oyster drape? You probably all know them. Winter oyster drape is the full year in the field from August till July and has to cope with all uh, challenges within this year. So the drought during planting, you have winter hardiness um, in winter, um, flooding, you have many diseases, uh, fungal diseases like sclerotinia, verticillium, you have clubroot disease, virus diseases, turnip yellow virus, and especially also pests a lot. So there's a lot of challenges uh, in winter oyster drape and also a lot of room for improvement for a winter oyster drape breeder. Additionally to the existing challenges, we have the climate change. Here there's two graphs where you can see what is the, the projected change in annual precipitation. And we all know it's getting warmer and warmer, and at the same time it's getting drier in the south of Europe, but wetter in the north of Europe, here shown in blue. And especially also in the Baltics, you can see the predictions even becoming wetter instead of drier. Wet and warm, these are perfect conditions for diseases. So we can expect that in the future we will have even more diseases in these regions. Additionally, we have a political change in the EU. They would like to reduce the pesticide usage, the fertilizer usage, so less crop protection. And yeah, those two things together, more pressure of diseases and less crop protection, yeah, lead to an even higher need of resistance breeding, which could be one solution. And additionally, also the economics play a role. So uh, the prices for fertilizer and also for crop protection means are getting higher, which and therefore some farmers also thinking if we can save some costs there and reduce the treatments, which is also possible if you have resistant varieties. So what have we done in the past at Rapul for resistant winter oyster drape varieties? In 2001, Rapul brought the first clubroot resistant hybrid on the market called Mendel at this time. In 2010, former resistance RLM7 was also implemented at Rapul hybrids. And the next step, 2016, uh, the first RLMS FOMA resistance was introduced to the market by Rapul and yeah, in the hybrids like Kicker or Dominator. And on the pictures, uh, you can also see how did we develop those resistances at that time. Um, and it was still a lot of handwork. So we have to infect plants uh, in the greenhouse, for example, here for clubroot or with FOMA infections. And then we make scores on the infected plants to find out which are the new resistant varieties. So a lot of work and takes a lot of time to have those resistances in our material. When we come along the time, then so we continue with the, our resistance legacy of the past. So in 2018, Rapul had the, the first turnip yellow virus resistant hybrids, Ragna and Temptation. In 2021, we introduced the first cylindrosporium, light leaf spot resistant hybrids, Murray and Maverick. 
Like leaf spot is a disease which likes it very much when the winter are warm and wet, so exactly what climate change brings to us. And we saw in recent years, also here in north of Germany, but even in Poland, uh, that this disease is spreading more and more in Europe and becomes more and more important. And we have already a solution for it. And then just recently in 2022, we continued the RAPU legacy of inventing or creating new clubroot resistances. And we introduced this CRE1, the extended clubroot resistance. The first hybrid was introduced into the market in this year called Crete. And also in the picture, yeah, you see here that we have susceptible varieties with a lot of galls. The Mendel resistance is a little bit better, but still some galls. And, and, and in this field, our new resistance was complete clean with very nice roots. So what I also have shown you in the past to develop such resistances was a lot of work. We need to observe the disease in the field or in the greenhouse to find out which of our new material is resistant or not. And sometimes if you have no lodging outside or if there's no FOMA outside, it was difficult and you could not make the selection. So in the greenhouse, with uh, greenhouse tests, it gets a little bit better. But now in the present and in the future, we have also better means. And one thing is the laboratory. So we analyze now the DNA of our new uh, plants, of our new material, and we know by analyzing the DNA if the plant has a resistance against FOMA or has a resistance against clubroot. And we don't need to observe it in the field. That saves costs and allows us also to create faster, better varieties with this resistance. We also have drones now. And drones allow us to create much more and very precise data on the field. So when we had to score in the past 1,000 plots, it took a long time. And now the drone is able to make it in like five minutes. Saying that, it means that in the future we have new tools to create even faster, better resistant varieties. Already after the introduction of the Mendel resistance and the CRE1 resistance, we have now in the pipeline the so-called CRE2 resistance. And it's the next level of protection against clubroot. And you can here see 15 clubroot races, isolates with very aggressive, which infect standard varieties are fully infected, which is signified by these red numbers. And you can see that those very aggressive uh, races even infect our relatively new CRE1 resistance to half of them are still infected. And now the new CRE2 coming soon to the market is able, except for two of them, is able to withstand them all. Another important disease also, especially in the Baltics, is verticillium. Um, and we are working a lot on, on verticillium at RAPU as well. And the outcome, you can see here some recent data from 2023 official trials in Poland. We had some really visible verticillium attack in Poland last year, also in the official trials. And it was scored below other um, diseases here, sclerotinia and FOMA. What you can see here that our, the RAPU varieties, Komat, Janosch, Mammut, Texas, Skeleton, are all on top regarding the verticillium resistance. They are very clean, we're very clean and much better than many of the competition varieties here, which are especially in verticillium, dark red and with a, with a high infection. As I mentioned already before, cylindrosporium, light leaf spot, a disease which becomes more and more important. And we saw also 2023, the first time in our tri station in Poland, cylindrosporium infection. Maybe in the Baltics, it's still very rare. And yeah, you can see it here on the coloration of the stem. This is a typical symptom of uh, cylindrosporium. The leaves are still hanging on the stem. Very susceptible variety and here, a resistant variety from us, completely clean, completely green. And this new resistance is already in hybrids like Tatu, Maverick and Bartosz coming now to the market. What are the benefits of this very good plant health in Rapu varieties? Very interesting for sure is also, yeah, what is the cost benefit also for a farmer if I grow such a healthy variety? And one example to show what this new hybrids and the performance of these new hybrids, yeah, how good that is, is here uh, data, again, official data from Poland from the last 10 years. In Poland, they analyzed the difference 
between hybrid varieties and OP varieties, because in Poland there are still also OPs applied in the official system. So you can see in, in 2013 the difference was 7%, so hybrids outperformed OP varieties by 7%. And this percentage over the last 10 years doubled or even more than doubled. And now in 2022, 2021, 2020, we see between 13 and 20% higher performance of hybrids compared to inbred line varieties. And as you know, especially the last three years, and also 2018 were very stressful years. So we can see that especially in st stressful years, with drought or a lot of rain or different stresses, hybrids show their potential. And uh, all the effort the breeding companies put into a hybrid breeding is shown here so that we can double our performance compared to the OPs. There's another um, trial we did during the last two years here in Germany in Hohenlied. And what we did is to compare on the same location varieties from the past and from the present. And uh, that was also quite obvious to see that we have very old varieties starting from Lenora um, registered in 1955, so more than 50 years ago. Um, but also newer varieties, so from 1970s, 80s, 90s, 2000. And there's a very nice increase. Uh, it's visible that our breeding efforts and especially our resistance breeding efforts also lead to higher performance under the current conditions ending up with Picard here, a variety registered in 2021, is on top of yield compared to all the others. So you can clearly see it's worse to rely on new varieties because all the breeding efforts go into that. And for sure, I can also say we do not stop here. We want to create further resistances. We want to create further um, improved performance. I hope that in 2020, 30, the next bar will be much higher again, or I'm quite um, optimistic for that. Thank you for your attention and have a good day.